What's up guys, it's Aiden and today we're going to go through how Jackboy's Gaddy was made on FL Studio. I realize I haven't uploaded in 16 days and this video is going to make up for it because I've got all the identical samples in the entire original song right here for you in this video and for my Patreon supporters I'm going to make the FLP available to you guys. First off if we go on to whosampled.com we can see that Gaddy samples this song that came out in 1980. It sounds like this. The first thing we're doing is chopping out the first two bars and putting them into the playlist and then we're going into the audio clip and taking the pitch up to 400 cents. So it's going to sound like this without any external effects. Then for external effects, we're layering in parametric EQ2 and we're cutting out the low end and we're bringing up the high end. Then we're putting on half time to make this sample play at half speed. Then I'm just adding a few more EQs to make sure that the frequencies are 100% correct. And at the end, it will sound like this. Then after eight bars, the sample switches up and it will sound like this. To do this, we can duplicate the sample and go make unique as sample. Then we're taking the pitch back down to zero and we're putting it on an empty mixer track. Then on this new sample, we're putting on parametric EQ2 and we're completely cutting out the low end. So this is what it's gonna sound like at the end. And in context. Then we have the identical kick. I'll show you what it looks like now. <laughs> so the kick is the ghosty kick and you can see that this is the identical sample because the waveforms match up perfectly. In context, the kick sounds like this. Also introducing this song, we have two different sound effects. The first one is this swoosh sound effect. And then we have this scream vox. And also the 808 comes in reverse. So it sounds like this. Then I'm pretty confident once again that this is the identical hi-hat that was used. It sounds like this. And this actually comes from a snare sample, which is the LA Beats snare. This sounds completely different without any effects. To make this a hi-hat sample, we are pitching this down by 600 cents. Then we're taking up the in and the out. So it will sound like this so far. Then on the mixer, we're adding parametric EQ2, which will make a world of a difference. I'm not going to play you the entire loop, but this is the gist of what it sounds like. What's really interesting here is we're making these hi-hat slides. So you can see it starts off at zero volume with this note here, and then it quickly jumps up to the second note, which is at full volume. So this is what it sounds like without the slide notes, and then with the slide notes. So the hi-hat turns into more of a shaker. I really hope that makes sense to you. This is a really cool tip to know when making drill music. And in the background, these notes are doing the same thing, but they're a bit quieter and they're playing every fourth step. So all together, it will sound like this. So again, all together. Then we have the identical snare, which is this BWB snare. The 808 loops on this song are crazy. I'll give you a taste now and then we'll go through the entire thing. Crazy, all right, let's go. So let's go through these 808s pattern by pattern. This is the first one. So the note we're seeing a lot here is D5. That's because this song only has one key, which in this case is D minor. So if we enable grid highlighting, which is just Alt B, we can see the D minor scale. And let's go through this part here. So you can see that this note here, it starts at the velocity of zero. And we're using this slide note here to make it slide from zero to 100%. And using slide notes on the velocity will make the 808 fade in instead of punching in. Then we have this part here. And these two notes here, the A5 and the B5, are making the pitch of the 808 slide up to D6 faster than if we weren't using these notes. And we're doing the same thing here with the slide down. And we're also adding in some Camel Crusher to add some distortion as it slides. Then to emphasize the 808 again between kicks, we're adding Camel Crusher a second time. 
And Camel Crusher is free to download, so definitely check that out if you haven't already. Coming back into the 808. We're doing another slide here. So again, we're introducing the 808 at a velocity of zero and we're bringing it up to 100 using a slide note. Then after one beat, it slides up to D6 and then D7 and then it comes back down to D5. And again, we're adding some distortion during the slide. Then we move into the chorus here and the 808 here is really interesting. Let's quickly go through the vocal sample. It's the MZ Vox Drill Soprano. Then you can go into the envelope slash instrument settings and take the sustain up to 100% and then put the release to around 13%. That means that when a note stops playing, it sort of fades away instead of it very harshly stopping. So you can take up the release to make the sound a bit more realistic. And the vocals play this loop. And we're using slide notes here to make the notes increase in volume as they play. Then you can go into note properties and note pan and we're making this panning loop in the first four bars so you can see that it's switching from right ear to left. So all together. Then let's go back to the 808. So here we have this new pattern. What's cool about this first 808 descending slide pattern here is that it goes from D to A, which is a perfect fifth. That's pretty normal. So it goes from down to G, still in scale, staying in G, coming down to D sharp, which is creating a lot of tension. But the thing is D sharp is outside the D minor scale. So if you know much about music theory and modes, we're actually borrowing from the D Phrygian mode. So if we go to scale highlighting and other Phrygian, we can see that all of these notes are in the Phrygian scale. Then we have the most unique part of the 808 pattern in this song. This is again, really interesting. The pattern is D, A sharp, D, F, which is this sort of back and forth. And we're chopping the 808s off before the next 808, which is creating some separation between them. And we're using these notes here to slide the 808 down before it cuts off. So instead of it sliding up to D and then stopping, it will slide up to D and then it will slide down to C and it'll also get quieter. So this is creating a nice little fade. Then also we're going into note pan and creating these left to right note pans. And you will see these patterns a bit with drill music. Following that, we slide from D5 up to A6 and then back down again. And that's pretty nice because again, since A is seven semitones above D, it's a perfect fifth above it, which is a fulfilling, you know, nice sound. Then at the end of the loop, we're doing these nice little sliding jumps. Jumping from D5 to D7, then A5 to F6, then finally A5 to A7, then back down to A5. Then finishing off the verse, we have this last 808. This part slides from D5 to D6, then plays again in Phrygian mode from F, D sharp, down to D. So after the first 32, 40 bars, we're jumping back into the first version of the sample where it's been half-timed and we're layering on top of that the hi-hat. These 808 patterns go throughout the entire song. The only thing I wanna go through with you now is this part in the Travis Scott verse where we have this love filter coming on. Then we're coming into the bridge where it's a lot more choppy. And following that, we come back into the original first beat with Pop Smoke. Obviously, I left a lot of stuff out for this video. If you want a more in-depth look, I will make the FLP available to my Patreon supporters. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and I will see you guys next time. Boy.